It's a sectional final tonight here on OCA Media, and it's gonna be the Edgewood Crusaders and the Lakeside Lutheran. Um, trying to figure it out, honestly. Warriors, I believe. The Warriors? Warriors, okay, yeah. 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 Looking at their warm-ups. I can't read that far, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> Warriors, yeah. Warriors, they, it's gonna be the one to two matchup here in sectional number three in the division three bracket here here at Oregon High School. Pack gym tonight, sectional final. We got two teams in D3 already gone through, uh, West Salem and Brilliant, I believe. And yep, then yep. we got Milwaukee Academy of Science playing. Uh, St. Thomas Moore, I believe. St. Thomas Moore, yeah, yeah. They play over in uh, Waukesha South, I believe. Winner of that will head to state as well. The winner of this Lakeside Lutheran versus Edgewood game. Of course, I am Luke Marks alongside Jackson Brockman. I thought just two weeks ago, uh, right? <laughs> Only a week ago would have been yeah, my last broadcast. Yeah. But we're back here tonight as the Crusaders take on the Lakeside Lutheran Warriors. Of course, you guys have, who are people from Oregon who have watched the broadcast before have seen the Crusaders, of course, Panthers coming up short in overtime both times they played Edgewood this year and a team that me and Jackson both very familiar with. Yep. As for Lakeside Lutheran uh, playing in the, oh, I looked at this earlier, they play in the conference uh, Got to check now because I looked at it earlier and apparently it slipped my mind. Capital North. The Capital, yeah, there yeah. it is. Capital North. Lakeside Lutheran, I think, won that conference. Finished 24-3 yeah. and three overall so far. It's like might have been co-champs with Columbus and Lake Mills. I'm not sure if there's a tiebreaker in there or what. Uh, I don't believe they've put out all conference teams yet. I'm not seeing that on Wisports.net. Although we can say for, of course, the Sedgwick team who is in the same conference as Oregon, Al Dang, first team all conference. Lucas Shulakos, second team all conference. And then uh, I believe Paul Kraske was an honorable mention. Rex Lamb, yep. And Rex. Donovan Nedelkoff, a usual starter for the Crusaders, out tonight with an ankle injury, it looks like. He's got a boot in that left foot, so he will not be playing tonight for the Crusaders. So without a big piece there, First down of in former Oregon attendee, as well as Hunter Dabrinsky, who's lit the Panthers up from three both times he's uh, played the Panthers. Uh, I remember I was in the student section at Edgewood. He uh, shushed us a couple times and route to an Edgewood win, and we were not thrilled about it. Uh, Almost uh, time uh, now, two minutes to go. That was Here. a big game at Edgewood. That secured them. Uh, the conference championship berth, uh, of course, in the Badger West, there's the uh, Badger Northwest, uh, Southwest crossover for the championship, uh, and Edgewood lost that Sauk Prairie. Which um, gave Sauk the tournament conference, whatever right, you call it, or whatever yeah. you want to call it. So Sauk technically won the conference while being the team that uh, finished with the fourth best record in the conference. An interesting format in the Badger, for sure. Then Edgewood finished second, Oregon finished third, Portage finished fourth, Mount Horeb finished fifth. I digress because <laughs> the rest doesn't really matter. Yeah, I believe Monroe, maybe Monroe, Reedsburg, yeah. uh, Baraboo, not sure how they finished. But. Overall, just. Yeah. I wonder how that'll play into this uh, matchup. Uh, Edgewood playing in a Division II conference. Uh, I guess theoretically you're gonna be playing against better teams all year. I think the Capital is a Division Three, uh, mainly conference. So, but they do have a lot of teams of that course, you'll see yep. play local areas in non-conference games. Of course, Lake Columbus, Ooh. Lake Mills, Lakeside solid Lutheran, programs, Nucleris, yep. all solid programs. Edgewood plays in the Capital Conference for football. They are a yep. Badger team still for basketball, and they'll be back in the Badger Conference uh, in the next football conference shakeup. But right now, Edgewood playing in the Badger for basketball, but. Of course, I'm sure these boys are familiar because they play during football season, so a somewhat of a rivalry, you could call it, but now we'll pass it over to our PA here for the National Anthem on OCA Media. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Oregon High School for tonight's WIAA Boys Sectional Final between the Warriors from Lakeside Lutheran High School and the Crusaders of Edgewood High School. 
Fans, at this time, to honor America, would you please rise if you are able, remove your caps, and join in singing our national anthem. Lakeside Lutheran High School, Edgewood High School, along with Oregon High School and the WIAA require good sportsmanship at all education-based interscholastic events. All students, coaches, and fans are expected to support the players and officials in a positive manner. Any profanity, racial, sexist, or ethnic comments or other intimidating actions directed at officials, players, coaches, or team representatives will not be tolerated in our grounds for removal from the site of competition. On behalf of Oregon Director of Athletics, Good luck to all competitors and coaches. Please enjoy the game in the spirit of positive sportsmanship. We'd like to thank this evening's officials, Jared Flesh, Steve Garvel, and Ty Duvall. And now, here are your starting lineups for tonight's game. First, for the visitors from the Edgewood. At forward, a 6'6 senior, number four, Paul Kraske. At guard, a six foot senior, number five, Hunter Dobrinsky. At guard, a 6'3 senior, number 11, Al Dang. At guard, a 6'4 senior, number 13, Lucas Close. And at forward, a 6'2 senior, number 40, Mark Herring. The Crusaders are coached by Reggie Patterson. And now the starting lineup for the Lakeside Lutheran Warriors. At guard, a 6'4 senior, number five, Trey Lauber. At forward, a 6'5 senior, number 13, Ethan Schutz. At guard, a 6'2 junior, number 23, Alex Reinke. At forward, a 6'4", senior, number 24, Levi Burkholz. And at forward, a 6'8", senior, number 44, Anders Learman. The Warriors are coached by Todd Jans. Well, about that time now for basketball here in the sectional final. Lakeside Lutheran and Edgewood gonna go to battle. Paul Kraske gonna jump it up there with, is that Levi Burkles? No, he's not, that's. 34, 40, 44, 40, Anders. Anders Learman oh, yeah. and tip controlled by Lutheran. It's Ethan shuts inside quickly. Good contest, stolen away by Edgewood, back the other way. It's close to the rack, not gonna be able to finish. Ball popped up, Kraske to follow. And the first points of the night for Paul Kraske. The all-conference honorable men's from the Badger Conference gets the scoring underway here in the sectional final. You wonder if it'll be an advantage for Edgewood uh, playing in this gym before, maybe just a little bit more familiar 
with the backdrop for shooting. It'll be interesting to see how Lakeside Lutheran can adjust to that. They drop it inside to the baseline and the fall away is good. Levi Burkles, the Citadel commit, gets the first Lutheran points on the board. And surely uh, Lakeside Lutheran will be going to Levi Burkholz plenty this game. Uh, over 20 points a game uh, this year. Definitely uh, the leader of this team. Al Dang, the All-Conference Player of the Year runner up in the Badger West Conference behind our own Evan Miles. Going to go to work, dumps it off to Herring. They go to the top for Dabrinsky. On to Dabrinsky, right wing. Iso side. Screen set from Kraski. Dabrinsky. Still up top goes to Herring. They swing it to Coase. Dump off for Dang. The pull up good. Drop off. Kraski the finish. Thought about the dunk. Laid it up with the soft touch instead. Edgewood 4 to 2. Really good deliberate offense from Edgewood there. Uh, longer possession. Uh, Al made a good cut there to get open and a great dump off for the open look. Good defense by Edgewood. The kick in. Stolen away by Harry. On the court he goes, slows it down. Now the extra pass to Brinsky. Gonna fire the three. It's off by quite a lot. The foul against Burkle says Mark Herring goes spilling to the floor on the attempt for the rebound. Don't know if I, I thought it might have been just, you know, two guys yeah, going up at yeah. the same time, but. Definitely looked like a foul. Uh, probably a pretty decent call. Trying to keep the game under control. Yep. Bit of a collision there, but. Nothing intentional, Herring of course. Herring uh, definitely yeah. spilled to the floor at a heavy level here is Edgewood again back on the offense. Four to two with the ball in possession. A minute in now, it's Coase. Pulls up from the mid range. Tough finish is good from Lucas Shula Coase. Now Burkholz gonna draw Dabrinsky. Screen comes inside. Burkholz is fouled by Al Dang. He's gonna go to the free throw line, shooting two, a chance to put Lakeside back within two here at the free throw line. That's too easy for Burkholz there for Edgewood. Uh, just a ball screen, he got all the way downhill with his right hand. Uh, they're gonna have to stop the ball early. Uh, Dang could have slid over. Dang's the one who tripped him up. He could have slid over and got his body in front. He misses the first, uh, but Edgewood's not gonna wanna let him get downhill with his right hand all game. Free throw is certainly gonna be a factor here. Lots of. Big physical players from both sides. Of course, the six foot eight listed Anders Learman for Lakeside Lutheran is probably going to draw a lot of fouls. Al Dang is pocket picked down the court. Left hand is good there from Alex Rinke. I've been impressed with the Warriors ball pressure this far. They've pestered the Edgewood uh, ball handlers. Stabrinsky, he Dumps off to Coase. Screen gonna come from Kraski. Now Coase, another pull up is good again. Lucas Coase, early and often from the mid range, has four of Edgewood's eight. He's got it going from the mid range, like you said. Uh, that's his spot. He's able to get to it pretty easily. Gonna have to shut that down if you're lakeside. Coase the block. Saw that one coming. All the way, Trey Lauber tried to go up and Lucas Coase said absolutely not. Edgewood crowd certainly letting Lauber hear it. Edgewood picking the pocket there off the inbounds. It's Coase, down the court he comes. Inside out dribble, travels. Mistake from Coase, gonna give Lutheran the ball back. Yep. Down three. Couple of early turnovers for both teams. Oh, that travel, Lakeside Lutheran has a couple already. Looks like Edgewood went uh, with the zone off the inbounds. You see that a lot more now. Uh, Might have fooled Lakeside Lutheran a little bit. They didn't know where to go with it. Screen gonna come from Lauber here. Top of the key, Ethan Schweitz. Wanted Burkholz, they swing it. Now in the corner, the drive inside, extra to. Schweitz there, he travels, stepping inside. Both teams still settling into the sectional final. Of course, high pressure, high yep. energy. Yep. You played in the sectional final last year. I'm sure you were <laughs> just as well aware as all these guys are experiencing right now, yep. the pressure of Absolutely. the packed house, yep. everything. The fight for state. Dabrinsky puts a three in. Edgewood now up six. And that goes back to maybe Edgewood being familiar with the gym, uh, getting that three knocked down. Dabrinsky 
has lit it up in this gym, as you were saying earlier, so. I'm Dang, picks the pocket. Gonna have a chance at a slam. He puts it down and edge it up eight. Wow. Ferocious <laughs> throwdown from Al Dang. Time out Lakeside as the Crusaders fired up early. It is 13 to five here on OCA Media. Yeah, you could feel the energy in the gym when Dang got that fast break. Everybody knew he can go up and throw that one down. It's exciting play here early for Edge Road. Lakeside Lutheran's gonna have to come out strong from this time out, try and battle back. Uh, definitely plenty of time left in the game, but you can't let it get away too early. Well, plenty early here, four minutes in, and Lakeside's gotta get something going though. Been relatively stagnant offensively. Edgewood been playing great defense, lots of poke aways, both from Coase and Dang, and then of course just Errant passes from Lakeside Luther and telegraphed and resulting in turnovers. I don't think that's the last dunk you're gonna see out of Edgewood tonight. You got Lucas Coast and Al Dang, two ferociously athletic players. But back to play here. Lakeside Lutheran gonna start it off. Burkholz goes left side, screen set, switch comes. Now the drive, top of the key. Had a pretty open look there. Again, out of the corner. Rinky, guarded by Coase. Pressure to cut from Burkle. It's gonna go to the hoop. Not quite gonna get the layup to go, but two more free throws coming for Levi Burkles. Yeah, good job by Burkle. It's getting open there. Uh, if he's gonna be face guarded, I'm not sure if it's complete face guard yet, um, but they're definitely trying to prevent him from getting touches, so back cuts are gonna be key for him to get open. First one good from Burkles. First sub of the game. Josh Power is gonna take the place of Learman. So. Yep, 6'6", six, six junior. Uh, not much of a difference in height there. Good size for Lakeside Luther. Lakeside should have at least the single size advantage the entire night. I think they have the two tallest players in the gym with Learman and Powers. Back on offense is Edgewood here. It's Herring top of the key, wanted Al Dang. Now picks his dribble up, gonna need to find somebody, goes to Dabrinsky. Top of the key, Dang calls out a set for Edgewood. They go two at the elbow, screen set, come across top of the key for Herring. Dump off inside, Kraski spins and goes up, draws the foul, two free throws coming. It looked like pretty solid defense there. Just got him with the body a little bit. Good job from Paul Kraski. Staying disciplined, staying on the ground, and then getting the best chance at the bucket. First one gonna bounce a couple times and miss. Now Kraski's second attempt wants to give Edgewood a seven point lead here with the free throw. Too strong, Paul Kraski misses them both. And yep, not a bad foul there. Burkholz throws it off the hand of Powers out of bounds. Yeah, Burkholz still uh, turned it over a little bit. I thought he would have settled in by now. He's a big time player. Definitely, the ball's gonna be his hand a lot, so he's gotta cut down on the turnovers if uh, they want a chance here. Gotta get accustomed to the energy that yep. is gonna be here all throughout the night, especially as we get later into the night here at Oregon High School. Looks like that pass might have knocked over an open water bottle on the edge with Something spilled some liquid. A couple of people cleaning that up, some managers for Edgewood and a couple of Edgewood players. Luckily Edgewood uh, has towels on their bench. They're able to clean that up pretty quick. Before it gets out of the court. Yeah. So a quick pause in play here on OCA Media while they handle that. Just making sure there's no excess liquid on the court or near the bench so the boys don't step in anything that gets their shoes slippery. I wonder if the water bottle was open or if it got knocked over and opened up. I'm not sure why it would have been. It looks like just one of those Gatorade water bottles. Yeah, must Normally have pretty sturdy. Somehow had the stop come off of it. Back to play here, Al Dang. Dang again calling out a set for Edgewood. They go four low, Dang at the top. Coast with the left side. Dang kicks the coast, draws up a three, no good. Just missed. Lucas Coast, a smooth stroke, but not quite. Here's the pass, good find there. It's 
Shots, they swing to Burkles. Burkles goes inside. He goes up and draws the foul from Paul Kraske. Again, pretty good defense. Uh, same ref making the same call, so he's being um, consistent. consistent. Yeah, that's, so that's, that's what you want. Anymore, yep. Yep. Kraske has two. That's going to maybe play a factor here. See, uh, I believe that's Jasper Alleman. It's Carter Wiesickle checking into the game. Wiesickle going to take the spot of Kraske after he gets two fouls here in the early going. And Burkholds uh, is living at the free throw line right now. I believe this is going to be his sixth attempt of the game already. Yep. Gets that one to go. Lead back to four for the Crusaders here. Al Dang going to bring it across half court for Edgewood. Kick to the corner for Dobrinsky. He will work right, find Lucas Coase at the logo. Coase works inside of the baseline, is denied there. Pass inside. What a pass. What a find from Lucas Coase and Mark Herring finishes on the layup. A yeah, really good cut, really good pass. Good offense from Edgewood. They've, they've looked sharp so far in the offensive end. Top of the key, Burkles goes left for Rinky. Now drop off for Burkles. He finishes with the right. <laughs> Levi Burkholz already up to, I believe, six of Lakeside's 11 points. Herring and Dobrinsky here. Dobrinsky at the right wing. Looking to get a post touch here. That one poked away, though, from Herring. Back the other way, they go to Burkholz, left wing. Burkholz going to step into a three, and it's good. Levi Burkholz cuts the lead to one. Yeah, he's certainly settled into this game here. He's leading the charge for Lakeside Luthen right now. As expected, yep. Levi Burkholz, a big-time player, making big-time plays when it matters most here in the sectional final. Kick to Coase in the right wing. Now back to Dabrinski. Lakeside Lutheran fans getting hyped. The energy shifting a little bit. Here's Wiesickle. Guarded by Power. Hand off to Al Dang. Dang goes inside. Denied by Lakeside. They have to go back and swing it for Coase. Lakeside fans getting loud now. It's Coast left wing. Clock down at 10 and a half minutes. A one point game here in the sectional final. Oregon High School on OCA Media. It's Lucas Coast. Of course, no shot clock playing a factor. A very long possession for Edgewood. Yeah, they have no problem taking as much time as they need right now. Screen comes from Wiesickle. They go to Dabrinsky at the right wing. Wiesickle wants it inside, but power is all over him. No switch, the dump off to Dang, almost poked away by Burkle. Sal Dang kicks to Dabrinsky, gonna fire a three, is long, and the rebound to Levi Burkles. Back on the court, good pass, good find, and Alex Rinke gives Lakeside Lutheran their first lead of the night. The spin, fall away from Coast, no good. Burkle grabs the rebound, back the other way, in a wow, rejection from <laughs> Herring. It was an awkward. Looked like a lot of arm from up here. Could have seen it wrong, but I thought they were going to call a foul there. The very least, an awkward shot. Rex yeah. Lamb, Mateo Jimenez in. Mark Herring and Hunter Dabrinsky out of the game. Trey Lauber out for Lakeside Lutheran and into the game, Cooper Milsna. They go to Milsna right away here. Now he dumps off to Powers with the left. And Wiesickle fouls him. Two free throws coming, Josh Powers. Yeah, Burkholz is for, uh, facilitating at a really high level right now. He was lighting it up uh, with the scoring just a little bit ago. He had the assist possession before. He had the outlet pass uh, that got blocked, and then that inbounds pass. Uh, it wasn't two powers, but good look on the inbounds. Powers end up getting open for the next pass. Lakeside certainly wanted to go in transition after they grab a rebound. Powers put the first through, two point Lakeside lead. The second is also good and Lakeside puts them both through. Powers earns himself a rest. Will Miller into the game now. Lakeside Lutheran fans, very loud here at Oregon High School. The energy is high tonight. Here is Jimenez, he goes to Rex Lamb, poked away. Burkholz down the court wow. and he slams it. <laughs> Goodness, 
Levi Burkholz above the rim. You're right, that was uh, the last dunk we saw was not Al Dang earlier. Wow. I did not <laughs> expect that out no. of a six foot four listed guards. You gotta assume he's probably six three and he got yeah, he, up. He looked behind him. You could kind of tell he was looking to go for that dunk, and he threw it down powerfully. Expecting maybe a little bit more of a rim crazy style, but Levi Burkholz gets every bit of power he can on that flush. 20 to 15 now, Lakeside. Al Dang on the floor, able to control it for Edgewood without traveling. Mateo Jimenez works left with it. Switch comes, they find Coase. Drives on Burkholz, gets him in the air, and a good finish by Lucas Coase. Yeah, really good pump fake there, playing off two feet. That's what you want to see as a coach. It's a great disciplined job there from Coase. Gets Burkholz in the air and gets himself an easier finish. Here is Burkholz now. Gives to Shets. Shets drives right-handed. Follow it. That's a tough finish. But Ethan Shuts makes it look easy. Zal Dang gives up to Rex Lamb. Coase will drive with it. He stopped, has to flip it up, Ooh, but a wow. late foul call there against Lakeside Luther and gonna give Coase two free throws. They call it on Cooper Milsna. Yeah, it looked like pretty solid defense. They just played straight up. Uh, I thought Coase might have tried to do like a little jump step, but he just landed on uh, one of the Lakeside Luthans players' feet and I thought they were gonna call travel at first. Yeah. Then the late foul call. Lucas going quickly, had to put that shot up before he traveled. Lauber back into the game, Powers back into the game. Ethan Schetz and Alex Rinke come out. Mark Herring in for the Crusaders, gonna take the place of Carter Wiesicle. So Coase shooting the second free throw here. Off back iron, no. Rebound for Burkles. Down the court he'll go, he guarded by Coase. Burkles stopped at the top of the key. Swing left, now dump off, pull up mid-range jumper is high off the back iron and no good from Will Miller. Up ahead here is Jimenez, they swing back to Lamb now. Top of the key, Al Dang will work. He goes inside, spins, poked away, but Jimenez keeps it with Edgewood. Pulls up in the mid-range, too strong. Had a good look, but not able to put it through. Back the other way comes the Warriors of Lakeside Lutheran here. Four-point lead. I think Lakeside Lutheran has done a better job of speeding up Edgewood, uh, Edgewood's offense recently. Flipped up with the left there, no good. Just early edge was taking their time getting good looks, but recently just like that. Lamb walks into a three and Edgewood cuts it to one off the Rex Lamb triple. Yeah, some quicker possessions, that was a good look from Lamb there. Second leading scorer I believe behind Al Dang. Um, so he's looking to get going here. Second or third between him, Coase and Dang. Three great scorers at Edgewood. There's Burkle. Thought about the three, had a little bit of space, but didn't take it. Now, Josh Powers, top of the key. He'll go inside, and Milsna has to kick it back out. Corner, it's Trey Lauber. He has to go through, and a kicked ball from Mark Herring. Under the basket, Lakeside going to inbound it with. Burkholz, they dump it off to him, and he, what a finish wow. there. That was a nice little play. Made that look easy. Yeah, throwing it in, just getting under the basket. Al Dang drives and kicks, Mateo Jimenez fires a three, no good, and Powers and Dang fight for it. Ball's loose, goes to Lutheran. Tipped, Lauber able to keep control of it. Now they'll go to the ground, and Lakeside able to keep it. Inside, Burkholz, oh! Wow. All right, what a hectic possession. <laughs> Burkholz almost flushed that somehow. <laughs> I thought he was somehow gonna put that down on Lucas Coase, but that's not something you would really ever see is Lucas Coase getting postered. Almost still gets it to go. Rolled around the whole rim and then popped out, but two free throws coming for Burkholz, his seventh and eighth of the night. 
Seventh is good. 25-21. Couple subs for each team. Hunter Dobrinsky and Jasper Allen into the game. Mateo Jimenez and Aldang come out. And for Lakeside, it looks like Cooper Milsna and Will Miller will come out of the game in place of Ranky and Jay Yankee. Second one missed there from Burkholtz. Three from Alleman is no good. Powers keeps it in. That's the length from Josh Powers. Looks Very like we have a sub for Burkholtz coming in. It'll be interesting to see what they play like without him. So Aldang and Burkholtz off the court, the two best players here tonight. And Ooh, then an uh, offensive moving, moving screen called against Josh Powers. So sub's gonna come in now for Burkholtz. His first rest of the game comes with 5.46 to go in the first half. See if Edgewood uh, calls out a set here, maybe to try and get an open look. I feel like they've been taking a lot, a lot of early shots, like I was saying earlier. That last possession, the three from Dubrinsky, he made the one early, but that last possession just seemed like a really quick shot for him. Lucas Coast drives and is blocked away by Ethan Schetz. Lakeside Luthen has done a really good job of just being pesky on defense, uh, slapping the ball away, whether it's a uh, ball pressure or just like that on a driver. Rex Lamb works right corner. They had to go back left. Here's Jasper Alleman. Alleman goes baseline. Careful not to step out of bounds. Throws it away. Inside here. Now kicking it back out for Powers. Powers too strong, but Lauber able to keep it in. Lauber goes baseline. Flips it up with the right. No good. Offensive rebound out of bounds off of Costa's foot. It'll stay on that side. Al Dang and Burkholz back into the game. Quick rest, I'm guessing Burkholz is just following Al's move, every move. Powers comes out. So does Alleman. Here's Lauber now over to Rinky inside, Burkholz blocked by Dang, but the follow is good from Ethan Schatz. Rex Lamb, good pump fake, pulls up from the mid range, easy enough for Rex Lamb. He looks like he's still trying to get going. He made that three and that was a sweet pull up there. Got a real smooth stroke. And so like Sadduth, they're gonna have to do a, a good job and not letting him get open looks. Jay Yankee goes to Burkholz here. Guarded by Dabrinsky, now goes inside, pulls up from the mid-range, wow. and Levi Burkholz. Yeah. I see why he is a D1 <laughs> athlete. He is showing us all why tonight. Lucas Coast, top of the key. Stutter step, he runs inside, draws the foul on the finish. Think they're gonna get Burkholz here. They do, and Coast as well gonna shoot one. Wants to put Edgewood back within five. Jay Yonke out of the game, back into the game, Cooper Milsna. Anders Learman also in, gonna take the place of Trey Lauber. It looks like they might have got that foul on uh, 13. Yep, uh, gave it to Ethan Schatz yeah. instead of. Edgewood has not been uh, good from the free throw line. Uh, I know they missed a pair earlier. I think that's at least their fourth miss of the night. Rex Lamb, certainly a lot of pressure there. And out of bounds, batted away by Herring. The physicality's really picked up uh, these past four or five minutes of the game. Certainly. Uh, I wouldn't say uh, too many fouls going uncalled, just really physical play. Uh, good defense on both sides. Set it to the left corner. They drop it off for Burkholz. He's fouled from behind by Coase. And that's the last foul to give for Edgewood, so both teams now gonna be in bonus after every defensive foul. See if Edgewood sticks with this little zone they've been doing. I Off think it's just a two, three on the inbounds, yep. Looks like it. But you go to the high side for the big fella, Anders Learman. He sat for quite a while. Josh Powers, of course, having a pretty darn good game. As well as that man, Levi Burkholz. Now the Drive with the left there, blocked away by Coase. Al Dang wants to run in transition, kicks to Lamb in the corner. Head fake, step back three, no good. 
Good look for Lamb, but not able to finish, and yeah. Burkholz grabs the rebound. Thought he could have shot the first one, but he got an open look on the, the one dribble. And Burkholz <laughs> with the finish again. What a job, Levi Burkholz. Herring dumps it off for Al Dang. Spins and finishes with the right hand. Tough finish, facing backwards. Yeah, athletic finish there, absolutely. I can't be sure, but certainly Burkholz, I believe, has 14, 16 points, but yeah. he is getting a lot of rebounds as well. He may have a first half double-double. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. Burkholz pulls for three, no good. Thought he might have been fouled. Lucas Coast steps inside and draws a foul on the floor. Anders Learman gonna receive the foul for that one. Mateo Jimenez checking in here. It's like he'll take Rex Lamb's place. Gonna shoot uh, one on one here. See if the uh, Edward Crusaders can uh, fix their free throw woes early in this game. I think that's been the difference so far if they knock down all the free throws, uh, tie game, but. Post misses. Another miss, yep. The rebound comes for Lakeside Lutheran. Here's Burkholz, he goes inside with the right hand. What a finish on the finger hole. I mean, what more can you ask from <laughs> Levi Burkholz? Yeah, he's averaging about 21. He might get that in the first half if he keeps up this pace. He's doing everything for these Lakeside Lutheran boys, which has given them a six point lead now. Dabrinsky at the right wing. He's guarded by Ethan Schatz. Dabrinsky backed way out. He'll go to Al Dang, who's at the logo here. Two, and two minutes 11 to go in the first half. Dang works at left, wants to clear out. Mateo Jimenez finds Kos. Long possession again for Edgewood. They go to Herring, top of the key. Dumping it off now to Al Dang. At the block, he spins and finishes with the right. Uh, Dang and Burko is going back and forth right now. A lot of contact there as well, but no call. It's Levi Burkholz for Lakeside Lutheran. Coach Todd Jans calling out a play. They get something ready here. Burkholz, top of the key with it. Left side for Rinky. He drives, picked, able to keep it with the Warriors. Now it is Burkholz. Minute and 20 to go in the first half. Left side, it's Rinky. Now Schatz, dump off for Learman. The kick, mishandled by Lakeside, able to keep it with them though. Shot three for Schatz is no good. The rebound for Learman and he puts it back up, no good. Another one for Learman. Puts it up again, no good, and Coast the rebound this time. Uh, Learman trying to use his size in that possession. Certainly Got a couple was. of rebounds, yep. Just hasn't been able to finish so far. Al Dang, timeout, Edgewood. Lucas Coast calls timeout with 44 seconds to go. Edgewood, a chance, if they elect to go for last, to put it within one or two points if they were to knock it down. 33 29, Oregon High School. What a game so far. Levi Burkholz doing everything. These Lakeside Lutheran Crusaders has them up four currently. And for Edgewood, it's been a mix of a couple guys, Al Dang, Lucas Coase, Rex Lamb, all doing work to keep Edgewood close. So we are locked in a four point game. It's been a phenomenal high school basketball game so far. Uh, Great players on both sides, making plays. Al Dang has been carrying the load for Edgewood uh, these last few minutes. Burkholz has been phenomenal for Lakeside Lutheran, really putting him on his back right now. I'm gonna go down during halftime and see how many points Levi Burkholz has. I wouldn't be shocked if he has 20. Rex Lamb checked back in during the break there. He is gonna go for Edgewood here, top of the key. Just like Mills now meet him outside, they go to Dabrinsky, now dump off to Dang at the block. Kick to Coase, he goes inside and finishes with the right, tough finish. Thought he could have shot that three, but he did a good job getting to the rim on the drive. Really tough finish, like you said. Burkholz here with it, 18 to go. Last shot for Lakeside. Energy in the gym now. Edgewood fans on their feet. 
Block down to eight. Al Dang versus Levi Burkholz. He falls away. The mid range oh, is good. Oh my and goodness. Coast going to get a chance here at the end of the half. No good. And we go to halftime here at Oregon High School. The Lakeside Lutheran Warriors lead the Edgewood Crusaders by four, 35 31. We'll take a quick break here, be back with about three or so minutes left till we start our second half of play. Once again, Luke Marks, Jackson Brockman here on OCA Media in the sectional final of Division Three, sectional three.
Back in ready now for half number two from Oregon High School, the Lakeside Lutheran Warriors and the Edgewood Crusaders battling on OCA Media 35-31. Once again, I'm Luke Marks alongside Jackson Brockman. Been a battle so far to say the least between the Crusaders and the Warriors. Sectional final, sectional number three, battle to go to state. Two spots already filled up by West Salem and Brillian. The other two being fought for right now between yeah. these two teams and then also between St. Thomas More and MAS. At halftime there, St. Thomas More leads by one point over Milwaukee Academy of Science. Went down there and checked during halftime. Levi Burkholz with a slight 25, you know, <laughs> something slight. Yeah, already surpassing his uh, season average. Uh, I mean, I, I would have expected him to score more, uh, more than 21 this game, but to do in the first half alone is really, really impressive. Uh, you'd have to imagine Edgewood's going to have to change something on defense, scheme something up to slow him down. If he goes off for another 25 and he scores 50, I see almost no way that Edgewood can win this game. I see no way he doesn't score 40 at least. Yeah, he's going to get his shots. He's so, I mean, in the first half, he got to his spot effortlessly. And he, he knocked on oh, that effortlessly yep. from the mid-range, above the rim, yeah, he was, from he, outside, everywhere. Getting downhill early, finishing layups, getting to the line, uh, knocked down a three. eight free throws. Shot eight free throws. Finished six of them. Yeah, second, uh, second part of that uh, first half, he got more to the mid-range, and he was just knocking it down effortlessly. Uh, really uh, special to watch in that first half. Uh, see if he can do that again. It would be big for Lakeside Lutheran, but I'm sure Edgewood, uh, like I said, will uh, try and do something to slow him down. I would think so. so. Another guy who's done well from the mid-range, Lucas Coast there, number 13 for Edgewood. And then, of course, number 11, Al Dang, had a great game so far in his own right. Him and Lucas trying to keep this one close for Edgewood. It'll be Al Dang to start it. Jab step. Thought about pulling up for three. Instead gives it up. Dabrinsky right wing. They had to go back to Herring. Now back to Dabrinsky. Dumped off down low. Now Dabrinsky will bring it back up high to the wing. Dribbling outside there. Guarded by Schatz. Now go to, they go to Lucas Coast. Top of the key. Edgewood being more deliberate uh, as they were at the start of the game. I think they were more successful this way. And off to Al Dang. Behind the pack he goes to Coast. Good ball deny there, Lucas Coast not able to get enough clearance to knock down a shot there. Both sides of the crowd getting into it here. Al Dang dribbles right. He stopped, already a 50 second long possession to start the half. Setting the tone for the half in a tight battle. It's Al Dang here, he goes right, pulls up and a charge from Al Dang. Drawn by Alex Rink. You don't know if it was more pressure from Dang or if it was more of a fall backwards from Ranky, but. Yeah, blocked from up here. We couldn't see Ranky was right in the way. A minute and two second long possession ends in a charge. Not ideal for Edgewood to start the half. Go inside to the big fella, and he mm. finishes Anders Learman. Edgewood went with a little pressure there. Lakeside Lutheran had. Zero issue, breaking it, good pass to get the open layup. Perkle almost picked that one off, would have surely ended in a dunk, but soft touch from Coase off the high glass. Matches yep. Anders Learman. Edgewood in a bit of a 1-2-2 two, two half court press. Good job from Lakeside Luthen getting it to the middle there. Here is Rinky, he goes to the corner for Schatz. Swing it back to the top side. Burkholz goes inside and finishes the right hand. Yeah, that is way too easy for Burkholz and for Edgewood. Uh, no rim line help. I'm not sure what was going on there. Um, just let him get baseline way too easy. No help. Can't let it happen. Dump off to Al Dang. Triple team comes and they force the swing. And Herring goes inside somehow. No foul called and a rebound for Lakeside and a blocking foul from Dabrinsky. Yeah. Dabrinsky wanted the charge there, a bit of a half-hearted attempt. Uh, the ref was never going to give it to him. Dabrinsky getting a few words of advice from first-year head coach uh, Reggie uh, Patterson, formerly the coach at Verona. 
Drive inside, and a block in one. The finish from Levi Burkholz up to 29, perhaps 30. Already for Burkholz. Now Dang spent a little extra time on the ground. The Edgewood players certainly talking to Stripes a little bit there, not <laughs> too happy about the blocking foul. It's 100% a block. Uh, if anybody knows, uh, Edgewood likes to take charges. If you watch Edgewood uh, throughout this year, uh, at, at, like the Panthers are playing them and we watch those games, uh, they take a lot of charges. Uh, they get the calls a lot at home. Um, so not maybe so much on the road, yeah, not say. getting them here. So they're a little unhappy. Al but Dang out of the game and Rex Lang gonna take his place. So an early exit for Al Dang to start the half. And three fouls for Dang. Uh, you wonder how long they'll be able to go without him in the second half. That won't be too long. Burkholz finishes, he's got 30. Rex Lamb, top of the key here. Works left side for Dabrinsky. Herring gonna set a screen. They go right for Rex Lamb. Coase, jab step, now he works inside and is fouled on the way up. Calling it on the floor, I believe. Well, they are going to get it on the floor there instead of in the air, so. No free throws for Coase, instead inbounds for Edgewood under the hoop. Yeah, it'll be big for uh, Coase to pick up his scoring now with Dang out for a chunk of this second half. They do inbound and they dump it off to Coase. Good cut there and the left-handed finish from Paul Kraske. Edgewood's been real successful uh, cutting off the ball. They've gotten a few open looks. Uh, they had couple in the first half. <laughs> Burkholz with another two. Are no, wow. wow. I mean, as I have said numerous times, there is nothing more you can say about Levi Burkholz's effort tonight. 32 points already, and that's gonna go out of bounds. Out of the hands of Herring. It is Warrior basketball up nine, and the momentum certainly all in the hands of the Lakeside Lutheran Warriors and Levi Burkholz. I'm surprised Edgewood hasn't done more to get the ball out of his hands or something. He is just getting it way too easy. Pressure. They do dump it off inside the right-handed finish for the big fella, Anders Learman. I think Edgewood's so. going to need a timeout here soon. It doesn't look like they're going to take one on this possession, but Burkholz is just eating him up right now. Yeah, whether it's on the ball or off of it, Lucas Coast pulls up in the mid-range. No good. Kraske could have had a rebound, couldn't keep his hands on it. Instead, Levi Burkholz who goes to the rack and is fouled on the floor. Yeah, he's falling backwards the whole time. Grab Burkholz's arm as he was going down. I have Edgewood fans are upset, but that's Don't just, that's not a charge. Yep. That's not real basketball. Play the game the right way. The big fella gets close in the air and Anders Learman finishes. Time out, Crusaders as the Lakeside Lutheran Warriors burst off the bench up 13 early in the second half. Yep. It is 48-35 and the Edgewood fans are silenced here at Oregon High School. Coach Patterson trying to get in the ref's ears about those charge calls, but like none, we've none, said, yeah, none of them were charges. Not real basketball in my mind. You didn't see it much in the first half. Edge was trying to take the charges. Um, Get the I, ball back. Exactly. I assume that's something they talked about a half, maybe taking some more charges. Um, but so far, they haven't really taken any good ones. Uh, Dabrinsky had the really half-hearted attempt on the other side of half court. Uh, Kraski there just pulling down on um, Burkholz's arm. Yeah, certainly a great job from Lakeside Luther in there. Still plenty of time to go here though in the sectional final, 14 to go. Edgewood tried to throw a 1-2-2 half court zone uh, at the Warriors, but I believe they scored twice pretty easily off of there. Maybe just once and then they broke it the second time uh, with no problem. Um, but then it just, they went back into the half court defense and Levi Burkholz is really just assisting, scoring. He's doing it all right now for Lakeside Lutheran. It'll be Hunter Dabrinsky to start it off for Edgewood. Al Dang still looming over there on the bench. Pull up three from Lamb, much needed is good. A big shot from Lamb, they ran a double away screen for Lamb, he came off of it. Uh, good job getting his feet set. Uh, his defender struggled getting around that last screen. 
Pull up there from Burkholz and he finally misses yeah. a shot. <laughs> Edgewood student section, uh, happy to see him miss, man. You can hear a little reaction from them. Don't know if the refs quite caught it, but Lucas Copes, perhaps lucky he didn't commit a over and back violation. Had one foot over and the other foot back when he caught the basketball. But there he is with the left hand. That's a really tough finish, especially for, I mean, I got Lucas is a left-handed player, but certainly really good response a tough finish Edgewood. no matter what. They dump it off inside, and Learman works, not able to get it to go. A rebound fought for and controlled oh, wow. by Lakeside. Lots of contact, but. Very physical possession. I thought it was shooting foul, and then I thought a little trip there. Top of the key, Dobrinsky with it. Two subs await for Lakeside Lutheran. It's Hunter Dobrinsky, top of the key, eight point game. Screen set, Coast drives inside, kicks to Lamb. Rex Lamb wants to shoot that basketball. Just tell by the way he's looking up at that rim. Did you kick it back out top of the key for him? Another pretty long possession. Rex Lamb will back it back out. They're calling out a set here. I think they ran this a couple times. Yeah, clearing out, yeah. out one side. Comes to Brinsky, didn't have it for him. Mm -hmm. Gonna have to go to something else. Good defense, Lakeside Lutheran recognized the set there this time around. Here's Coase guarded by Burkholz. Screen comes, Coase steps inside. Sees a little gap, steps through it and finishes. Lead back down to six now. Levi Burkholz and Lakeside Lutheran still certainly in a battle with the Crusaders. Crusader student section now on a let's go defense chance. Trying to get their boys spirits up. The ball goes to Lauber, screen set by Burkholz. Lauber works left. The drive inside and a kick to Burkholz. Guarded by Coast. long possession now for Lakeside. Screen comes from Lakeside, now a left hand no good, and that's popped out of bounds by Anders Learman. Three subs for Lakeside as Learman, Lauber, and Alex Renke go to the bench. Powers into the game, Cooper Milsna into the game, and Will Miller into the game. A really good response from Edgewood. A seven over run to get right back into this game. And a chance to add to it. Yep. Coast works right. Herring goes, runs baseline. They swing it left for Rex Lamb. He works with his right hand, has it poked away, able to keep it with the Crusaders. Another drive, Kraski goes out of bounds. I think Powers has played really well off the bench tonight. Uh, coming in for Learman, uh, the backup big. It's like Wiesickle gonna check in. Takes a place of Herring. Bit of a press here for Edgewood this or this time around. Maybe yeah, just a man to man, a man to man yeah. drop off. Nothing much. Just make Lakeside Lutheran a little bit more uncomfortable. Exactly. The drive from Burkholz with the right, no good, and Burkholz has missed three straight. Yeah, showing us that he's human. Back down the court, it's Coase, and he's fouled. And there's a block from Schatz after the whistle. I think it's no coincidence that Edgewood's getting back into this game uh, while Burkholz is slowing down. Um, also interesting to see they're fighting right back into it without Al Dang. Yeah, ever since he went to the bench. I think they gave up a part of that run to start the half once Dang went out, but since then they've been real good. Mateo Jimenez in for Paul Kraski. To go to Dobrinsky, he drives left to the baseline, goes through to Lamb, Rex Lamb, big three, no good, rebound. Batted around, able to be held by Lutheran. Good pass back the other way with the right hand, the finish from Cooper Milsna. Yeah, really good outlet from Burkholz, and then uh, the cross court pass there is just beautiful. Coast works inside, needs help. Mateo Jimenez, gotta keep it in the front court, he does. Edgewood has chance to reset now. Down eight, 10 to go. Menez works right, hands to Dobrinsky. 
Kick to Jimenez, blocked away. Oh, that was not smart there for Berkeley. <laughs> Could have been a disaster if somebody from Edgewood was under the basket. General rule, uh, don't save the ball under your own basket. Uh, got away with it there. His foot was out of bounds anyways. But. They do drop it to Coase. He works inside and draws the foul on the way up. Yeah, Lakeside Lutheran's trying to give Edge with some of their own medicine to uh, take a charge, but well, again. again Mills are not able to get the yeah. call either, so these refs certainly not, They're not falling, falling for, for these. Yeah. I love it, I love it. Charges. I love to see it too, personally. I know me and you have talked about <laughs> time and time again the flop charges. Lucas Coase is first free throw. He's gonna go through. I mean, if you're falling over before the offensive player even touches you, it's, it's not a charge. Fortunately for Al Dang, he's trying to check in for Coase, so we'll see if Lucas can knock down the back end here and get Al back into the game. Down seven, Coase puts it through, and Edgewood cuts the lead back to six and gets Al Dang back into the basketball game. Lucas earns a quick rest. Yep. Edgewood did a good job holding serve uh, in those minutes without Dang. See if he can come back in and uh, get this lead back for Edgewood. I don't know if it's just me, but I feel like this crowd has grown a little bit since the end of the first half, honestly. I feel oh, like yeah, absolutely. some late stragglers showing up. Good pass inside. Powers gets the right-handed layup to go. Tough finish. Great job. It's a well-coordinated finish. Uh, ben Powers has continued, or Josh Powers, excuse me, has continued uh, to impress off the bench. Being in the right spot on offense, getting good looks, using his length to score inside. Had Weesicle on the cut there, looked pretty open, not able to dump it off to him. Instead, Edgewood goes to Dang, top of the key. Weesicle sets up inside on Powers, but once again, we saw that matchup in the first half, and I don't think they dumped it off to Carter a single time. Now it's Dobrinsky, he works right, hands off to Rex Lamb. Uh, ran that away, double screen. Uh, didn't run it for Lamb this time, ran it for uh, uh, Jimenez. Teo Jimenez finishes with the right. Thought it might have been a carry there, and poked away by Weesicle. He goes to Dang. Good job from Dang, pulling that one out. Didn't want to take a bad shot there after getting the steal. Lucas Coase almost cost his team there. He almost ran into the court celebrating, <laughs> and luckily stayed off of it. That would have been a technical for Edgewood, a bench technical. Al Dang works right, goes back to Dabrinsky, top of the key. Lead down to six, a chance for Edgewood to cut it in half or get it down to four. Dabrinsky works left, now back right. Good deny there from Lauber. Dump off to Dang. He works, kicks out to Lamb. They swing it to Jimenez. He tries a three, no good. Rebound controlled by Lakeside's Andrew Lauber. Good or job Trey Lauber, I Powers say. getting his hand on that one, uh, tipping it out. Lakeside Lutheran is playing phenomenal defense this game. Um, just moving their feet really well, staying in front of their uh, opponent. Had Burkholz off the slip there. That one off of Edgewood out of bounds. Into the game now, Kraski back in for Weesicle. Burkholz been in a little bit of yeah. a rut for <laughs> four or so minutes without uh, scoring. Definitely the longest he's gone this game without scoring. He's doing the why everything. so quiet yeah. chant is warranted when uh, <laughs> down six, but. Oh, well, uh, firing back at him. I would have gone with the scoreboard chant personally, <laughs> not that we can't hear you chant. I, I would have to agree with you on that one. And we're not keeping stats up here, but I think that uh, Burkholz has got to be nearing a triple-double. As you said, he had lots of rebounds in the first half. And he's been dishing it out uh, phenomenally as well. Uh, you got to think he's got at least five, six, seven assists, something like that. So if he can get up to 10, that would be something special, a triple-double in the sectional final. Timeout, Lakeside Luther in there. Gonna have a chance to talk things over here, get another chance at a couple of points. Big points needed, Lakeside Lutheran and Edgewood be going back and forth now for a little while at a six point game. So now got a little update from Evan Flood who's over at uh, Waukesha South watching that St. Thomas Moore versus Milwaukee Academy of Science game. St. Thomas Moore is up by four with 11.21 to go, last update there. And We'll, of course, keep you fans updated here to find out the other team of D3 that will be making it to state alongside one of these two, alongside Brilliant, alongside 
West Salem. So uh, That's got to be a fun one down in Waukesha. Uh, I believe both teams were in the state tournament last year. Yep. I, they both might have moved up from Division 4 to Division 3. Pretty sure MAS won the Division 4 state championship last year. Uh, Maybe it was the D3 state championship. No, I, I know one of them moved up. It was either one or both moved up. Um, I know uh, MAS won a state championship yeah. New York year, last year. I don't know what division I think it was, it was Division 4. Um, so St. Thomas Moore, I don't, I don't remember, uh, but they were both at state. Uh, now they're in the same sectional, so only one of them can make it this year, but surely a phenomenal game. Of course, the D1 and D2 fields have already been set for D1. It's De Pier, Arrowhead, and help me out here. I think uh, Nicolet. Nicolet maybe. and maybe. Uh, There's a finish and one wow. from... Burkholtz, yep. Kettle Moraine, Nina Arrowhead and DePier. And then D2 is Nicolay, Whitnell, Lacrosse Central, and Pewaukee. Yep. Yeah. So Pewaukee, a chance at a three-peat. And DePier, who has not, uh, not won a game by less than 30. And <laughs> they they've won every playoff game by 30 or more. And Burkholtz finishes the three-point play. Yeah. He's up to 35. Rex Lamb going to... Go to work with Coase. Want Kraske inside, and instead they go to Dang. Dang goes right as thought about the midi. Now passes back out to Lamb. Rex Lamb with the left draws the foul. Almost got the finish. Would have been a big one for Rex Lamb. Number 23, Alex Rinky has done a phenomenal job on Al Dang. I think this game, uh, Dang has got his buckets absolutely um, as we expected, but. Really, Rink or Rinky has done a great job uh, staying in front, moving his feet. Big uh, miss there. They're just playing good defense on uh, Al Dang. Edgewood's still struggling from the free throw line. Uh, it's cost them this game. Back the other way come Lakeside again. So Burkholtz, got to get the ball across. Don't know. I mean, they're calling on a play, but they probably could have waited a second or two to get the ball across. Al Dang pressures Burkholz. Behind the back, to the rack, left-handed oh finish. Oh my goodness. 37? 37. Yeah. Back the other way quickly is Coase. He goes to Herring, outside to Lamb. Inside now to Kraske, it's taken away. Ball batted around, kept by Dang. Coase inside and one there. Gets smacked by Josh Powers, but finishes anyway. Yeah, Powers did a really good job of digging down and getting the ball knocked away. Uh, bodies on the floor, Dang did a good job, or uh, Dang maybe ended up with it. I'm not sure who grabbed it on the floor for Edgewood. It was, it was, it was Herring, I think, Herring got it to got Dang. got it to Dang, yep. Uh, but I'm not, not sure it was the smartest play. Definitely ill-advised for Powers to uh, go for the block there. You never want to swing your arm. Uh, it's going to draw a lot more foul calls than if you just go straight up. Peter or Powers, I should say, out of the game, as well as Milsna. Back in is Rinky, as well as Learman. Lucas Coast with the finish. Back to a six-point game. Yeah, turning over Burkholz, not an easy thing to do. That's his first turnover since early in the game. Edge of fans is are getting into now. it. Yep. Yep. Back to a six-point game. Dump off and Learman. Smacked by a couple different Edgewood defenders. <laughs> Edgewood student section not happy, but definitely a foul. Herring, and uh, I don't know how Herring was the one who got the call on him. I'm pretty sure Paul Kraske just smacked uh, Lairman in the face, but you know. Yeah. Burkholz has been really good at that little pick and roll, just uh, tossing it up and letting his guys go get it. They dump it off, the spin. Shates misses, rebound controlled by Lamb. Back the other way for Dang to the rack to finish. The lead back to four. Worth noting now, Lakeside in the bonus. 5.22 to go. Edgewood fans on their feet. It's Burkholz goes to the corner for Lauber. Lauber misses. Uh, a couple of, the board. A couple of elevated shots from Lakeside within the past few times down. I think you really want the possession to end in either a Burkholz shot or a pass come from him off a of pick and roll. Four-point uh, game. That last one wasn't a terrible look. Possession before, I believe, uh, Sh or Schultz uh, just took a bit of an ill-advised fadeaway on the left block there. 
Here's Al Dang, gives to Coast. Now to Rex Lamb in the right wing. All the way to the corner for Herring. He wants to dump it off to Kraske. Timeout. Edgewood. Coach Reggie Patterson wanted to talk it over with his boys in a big possession, if not the biggest of the game all night. Four point game. Edgewood trails. 4.39 to go here at Oregon High School. OCA Media, once again, I'm Luke Marks alongside Jackson Brockman here. We got it all for you. This Sectional number three, sectional final in the division three bracket. Chance to go with West Salem and Brillian and either St. Thomas More or MAS. You know, the, uh, of course the MAS girls uh, lost in the state championship uh, game this afternoon to Kewaskum. They did if you've been indeed. following the girls state tournament, uh, crowned a few champions. I don't Brookfield know. Brookfield East uh, beat Germantown yesterday. Yeah, I KK think KK Arnold finishes her high school career now. Going to go on to UConn. Yeah, that's it's going to be something to watch. It's fun to see a player like that. There's Jocko down there. <laughs> NBC 15 getting those Edgewood fans. He is an Edgewood man himself. I know uh, Jocko pretty well. His son goes to Edgewood, and uh, he's been an Edgewood guy. Saw him over at Edgewood uh, a couple weeks ago. Me and Jocko, good buddies, I'd like to think. <laughs> Rex Lamb hands off to Al Dang, top of the key. There goes two back to Lamb, hand off to Kos. Al Dang with it inside, slips, able to Keep it, Rex Lamb misses the three chance to cut it to one. No good for Edgewood. Lakeside got to get it across here. Lauber pressured still by Coast. Does get it across and then a reach by Coast. Ill advised there once he got it across for Coast, but gambled and came up short. So one and one coming for Trey Lauber. Uh, only Coast is second, not the end of the world. Don't want to put him at the line though for sure. Uh, Lauber works misses, out right. though. Works yeah. out for Edgewood. They get the ball back. Here comes Coase. Slows down now. Goes to Dang. Dang. Stutter step. Gets Rinky moving a little bit. Yeah, Rinky continues to play stellar defense on Dang tonight. Dang walk through. Uh, gets Burkholz out of the way. Now Al Dang calling out a play and had a space there to go inside. Now he does. And no foul, Al Dang. Perhaps an ill-advised shot. Here comes Burkholz. Good pass and a good finish. Yeah. Ethan Schetz gets the lead back to six for Lakeside. Yeah, they, both these teams are really getting offense from their defense right now. They're forcing their opponent into bad shots and then getting out in transition, uh, getting open looks. That's how these offenses have been rolling in the Rex second Lamb. half. Big three, no good in the... Six foot eight forward, Anders Learman comes down with it. Now inside, Shets offensive ah. foul, Learman puts the chest into Al Dang. Edgewood finally got their charge. They tried to take two on that possession, didn't get the first one. I thought that would have been called a block just after the first couple were called blocks, but. Anders just a big fella, kind of turned around and they chest right into Al Dang. Yeah, that's probably the closest to a charge we've seen all night, so good Probably call the only the guy uh, besides maybe Burkholz who's gonna be strong enough to actually draw a charge, or yeah. to uh, force yeah. a charge. Yep. Here's Dabrinsky. He goes inside, and with the right hand, no good, but a foul, really late. Really late. But Hunter right. Dabrinsky gonna shoot two free throws. 2.47 to go, six point lakeside lead. It's a good job from uh, Dabrinsky. They ran a little flare screen for him to get him open. Uh, wasn't there, so he took it hard to the rim, got a uh, foul, now he gets two shots. Got another update. St. Thomas Moore still leading MIS by a score of 61-57 with 6.40 to go. Still plenty of time left over there in Waukesha South. Ah. Milwaukee Academy of Science and playing out their best player, Mari Mikachu. Three fouls. Lots of great athleticism over there on 
both of those teams, two great teams, two teams that you do not want to see in that state tournament. Yeah. Rex Lamb gets one of those to go, five point lead. Here is Schatz. There is, oh, could have been a reach on Kraski perhaps, but no call. And a foul against Paul Kraski off the reach. See if Lakeside they're thinking capitalize. They've been in the bonus here. They missed the first front end of a one and one. Uh, maybe not the worst thing in the world for Edgewood to be fouling uh, in the one and one. There's no the, good. Rebound again. is going to Edgewood. Here's Lucas Coase. That's a great defensive play there. Alex Ranke back the other way. And the finish for Burkholz has 39. Yeah, for those Levi of you just joining Burkholz. us, yep. Levi uh, Burkholz been the story of the game. <laughs> almost 40 now. He's put Lakeside Luthen on his back. Had 25 in the first half. Bit of a slower second half, but you can't have 14 points and then say you had a slow half. Shot three, no good by Coast. The rebound controlled by Lakeside up seven. Minute 50 to go. Back down the court come the Warriors. They want to slow it down. Herring pressures, gets the tip. Down the court, Mark Herring goes. Going to finish with the right hand softly. Timeout, Edgewood. Lead back to five. Not what the Warriors needed. Uh, Rinky, uh, maybe just over dribbling a little bit. He didn't have anyone to pass to. Not really his fault. Just a good individual play By on defense. Herring. Yeah. You'd love to see Burkholz get the ball and bring it up. Uh, he's just been real sound with the ball in the second half, but that happens. Uh, up five still. Got to protect the lead. Edgewood's done a really good job staying uh, connected. They haven't had it closer than four, I believe, in the second half. Um, but it's been real competitive uh, back and forth. Uh, Lakeside Lutheran got up by 11, I believe, double digits, something like that. So good job from Edgewood uh, keeping this one close. So a six point Lake, or five point Lakeside lead. 1.39 to go, it is Warrior basketball here. I see 1,202 of you tuned into this one. If you're just coming in, Luke Marks alongside Jackson Brockman thrown away there. Post goes for it, unable to come up with it. Here comes Burkholz, finds the corner there. It's Lauber, he's doubled and... I want to keep it out of the corners here. Lauber, good pass in a hard foul from Mark Herring. Good hard foul, make him earn it at the line. If he goes one for two, that's a win for Herring there. And they've certainly not been their best at the free throw line so far. Absolutely. Not sure why Burkholz was uh, so eager to give that ball up on the press. Yeah, um, for sure. Could have, I thought he might have been able to have a, take a floater over the line of two defenders. Yeah. When they first inbounded it, he gave it right back. Um, Front end is good. Big free throw big there free throw from there. Ethan Schatz. Like bringing Lierman. Lam and Jimenez in. Yep. Yeah, Lierman in. and Kraski out. Yeah, Learman back into the game for the rebounds over there on the defensive end and perhaps here on the offensive end. Misses. Learman almost. Rex Lamb back the other way. Six point game. Lamb to Coast. No, they sent it to Dabrinsky. Wide open for three. Banks it in. Yeah, looks like the Learman saw might have confused Lakeside Luthen. They didn't know who they were guarding. Uh, and that one tipped away. Coast Steel comes up Coast. with it. Plenty of time. Coast works inside. No good. And rebound from Lakeside Lutheran. Edgewood wanted a foul. Wow. Uh, certainly a disputed call there. Lakeside uh, fans happy with it. Edgewood fans less than pleased. But uh, here, Levi Burkholz at the line, chance for number 40 and number 41. End of the double bonus. Looks like uh, Learman was about to get subbed out. Um, that sub confused me the last time down. I don't know who he, who he matches up with very well on defense. No good okay. for Levi Burkholz. Leaving wow. the door perhaps cracked. Yeah. 54 seconds, plenty of time. 
Hooper Milsna back into the game for Learman. Timeout Lakeside. Interesting. Icing your own player, perhaps? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was. I don't he, know. <laughs> Levi Burkholtz, I wouldn't. I'd leave him out there to knock that down, honestly. He has not been phenomenal from the line this game. Um, is, but I, I, I would have expected him to make that first one. I believe six for nine in the line now, so 66%. Not what you'd expect from a guy who currently is sitting at 39 points and is shooting probably up about 80% from the field. Edgewood has definitely done a better job. Uh, Burkholz opened the second half strong, but since I think he's been held the four or five points in the last good 10, 12 minutes of the second half, it's been a big key Certainly. in staying in this game for Edgewood. Still sitting at 39 points. This free throw will be for 40. I would, if I, you know, if I'm picking a student section uh, spirit winner, it's got to be Edgewood. Yeah, I was just thinking the same thing. I was going to say, much if I as had to choose. Lakeside is the team that's in the lead right now and has the scoreboard chant in their favor. Yeah. Edgewood certainly with more spirit. I know Edgewood only a 20 minute drive, Lakeside about an hour, but with similar size, Edgewood certainly with more energy. Here, Levi Burkholz gonna be a guy who now has 40 points in the sectional final. See who Edgewood goes to here. You gotta think it's gonna be uh, one of Lamb, Dang, Coast, or Dang, yep. Here is Al Dang, goes to Rex Lamb. Don't know if that's a two or a three, no good. Coast the board. What are they gonna call? Foul. Yeah, loose um, ball, foul on Lakeside. Lakeside, Lakeside. Yep. yep. Free throws for Coast. That was a long two for Lamb. Uh, I thought he could have taken that first three. He's been able to shoot it off the dribble uh, this game, but the long two is not a great shot. He was trying to stay behind the line, obviously, but. Lamb and Jimenez out of the game. Herring and Kraski back in for defense, I'm assuming. Uh, they'll probably wait until the clock goes down to about 20 seconds on the defensive end before fouling. Coast needs it. It's no good. Big miss from Lucas Coast. And a foul on Al Dang. Going to send Burke Holtz to the line. Shooting two. A chance for number 41 and 42 and perhaps the ice for Lakeside Lutheran. First Both, one for yeah. Burkholz. Both coaches trying to use these free throws as um, some instructional time for their players. Crusader fans getting loud. Burkholz does nice. not put down the first. Leaving the door open for Edgewood these last few trips down, uh, missing the free throws. 40 points tonight for Levi Burkholz. A chance for him to make it 41 and a five point lead, he does. That one through very easily. They roll it up to Dabrinsky. Picks it up, passes to Dang. Clock below 40 seconds now. Edgewood gotta go. Dang will go inside and finish with the right. Press, they get it into Burkholz. Across the court he goes, now up ahead. To Schetz, and he is fouled by Lucas Coase. Edgewood played that really well. Didn't force the three, got the quick two. You hear that a lot. Don't need a three, get a quick two. They did it there. Still uh, 23.7 to go. Yep. Still, that's a lot of ticks. Got the ball out of Burkholz's hands. Uh, although he hasn't been making all his free throws. Um, we'll see how capable Ethan Schetz is in the biggest free throws of his life. Yeah. First one is put right through. Yeah, he's been real good, I think, knocking out free throws tonight. So I'm sure Lakeside Lutheran isn't too upset with him getting fouled. Back to four. Like Edge was discussing what they're gonna run the next time down. Now to five. 23 seconds to go. Still don't need a three, but would be nice if you get an open one. Here's Dabrinsky, almost didn't expect that pass. Could have been detrimental for Edgewood. Here's Jimenez, goes inside, okay, is right. fouled by Burkholz. That would have been a <laughs> massive block. Definitely a foul, but it was fun to watch him swat it away. Yeah. To say the least. Teo Jimenez, a pretty good shooter. Shooting two, a chance to cut the lead back to three and then have give Edgewood a chance to steal it off the press. But you gotta make him first. 
the senior, Jimenez, puts it through. Second now from Rex Lamb, 12-9 to go. Again, this time missed, rebound to Al Dang. Jimenez pulls for three, it's wow. good. Timeout Edgewood, why is the clock ticking? They're gonna have to fix that. Yep. Probably about 8-5, I would say. Maybe, even. let's take a look here. <laughs> we got the instant replay, call the refs up. Let's take a look. I'll let you guys know. <laughs> Missed. Jimenez. Eight to eight five. Anywhere between eight and eight point five is about where it should be at. Any less, and if I was Edgewood, I'd be pretty pretty upset if it was less than eight seconds. There we go. Eight four. All right, good job from the refs there. They've been really good tonight. Shout they out have to the been refs, really good yeah. all night long. One point game, so no matter what, Edgewood gonna get a chance to send Lakeside to the free throw line. They're gonna have to bring it all the way up the court and a chance to tie. If, uh, <laughs> well, we'll actually, you know, we'll see what all happens. I'm not gonna This has turned into guess. quite the finish. Yeah. That was a dream scenario for Edgewood. I don't, I can't imagine uh, Teo was instructed to miss that free throw. But he knocked down a clutch three, he so did. I definitely, Good job. he'll take that. Yep. Had some athletes in there getting rebounds. So Al Dang uh, knocking it around, Coast yeah. knocking it around. Even if Lakeside Luther knocks both of their next free throws down, assuming they don't turn it over, Edgewood's going to have a chance to tie it. So we're in for quite the finish. So here we are in the press. Sectional final at Oregon High School. Luke Marks, Jackson, Brockman here, bringing it all to you. Lucas Coase ripping on Burkholz there, uh, or not on Burkholz, on uh, Lauber there. Lucky enough for him. No foul called on him, but timeout Lakeside. They do take a 30 second timeout with 8.4 to go. Still a good amount of time, especially for these athletes on Edgewood, even if they do uh, make both free throws, Edgewood has time to run on the court. So now with 2.15 to go, MAS grabs the lead 66-65. Couple of one point games in these sectional finals for uh, Division Three. Nothing quite like sectional Saturday here in Wisconsin high school basketball. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, last year it was us in it. It was you. It was uh, I was enjoying that student section over at Watertown. Unfortunately, we could not yeah. knock off Westosha Central. But here we are, 8-4 to go. Inbounds is good. I don't know how Coast thinks he didn't foul. <laughs> Definitely. I uh, mean, smacked right, Ethan Shetz's right arm. Raked right across his arm, yep. How he thinks, yeah, Shetz is just gonna drop that one, but you know, it's okay. Yep. You gotta argue, it's just, it's the way it is. We gotta <laughs> try and yep. get as much as we can out of these refs. So just the 1.4 comes off, so Edgewood, regardless of what happens here, is gonna have 7.1 seconds. And I, they may have a timeout as well. I don't believe so. No? I think they might be all out, yeah. They may, they are, they are all out of timeout. So they're Coast gonna have to bring it length out. of the court. And yeah, Coast is done. All right. So one of perhaps three guys, maybe, I guess Rex Lamb's not even gonna be on the court, so. I think he's gonna be subbing in with Jimenez after this free throw. Yeah, that's good. There yeah, they, come. they come. Jimenez Lakeside, and Lamb. Yeah, Lakeside Luther was pretty intentional in getting uh, Shets the ball here, which I think was a good move. He's been real strong from the line, knocking him down with confidence. Now the second. And the biggest free throw of Ethan Schetz's career so far. Chance to put Lakeside up three. Is true. Clutch. Stone cold from the line to the... Edgewood got to have a three. Al Dang will pick up. Gives to Dabrinsky now. They go to Rex Lamb. Down to two. He's got a pull. No, no good. good. Wow. And Lakeside Lutheran are heading to state in Division Three. Lakeside Lutheran Warriors, welcome to the state tournament. We'll see you at the Cole. The good sportsmanship from Burkholz, consoling Dabrinsky, going over to Jimenez now, it looks like. 40 for number 24, Levi Burkholz. And Lakeside Lutheran 
are your sectional three champions in division three and are heading to the state tournament. I don't know how many times they've done that in their life. I can't say it for the first time. I don't, I don't know, but certainly congratulations go to Lakeside. Congrats to Edgewood as much as I wouldn't love to say it. And congrats <laughs> to Edgewood on their season. They made it to sectional final and great season for Al, runner up for player of the year. First team all conference, great season for Lucas. Second team all conference. And for the rest of those boys over at Edgewood, of course, Al's senior year, Lucas' his senior year, Rex will be back. Rex will be the leader of this team next year. We'll see him playing the Oregon Panthers. Al and Levi embrace there as Levi Burkholtz doing it all. And there's the plaque. I believe they yep. may have the plaque now. So athletic director Brittany Spencer Grant bringing it out and yep. the medals uh, for both teams, of course. Uh, Edgewood's going to go home with a second place sectional medal. But it's not what they wanted. But, but it's nothing you know, slight, you know. It's, not, it's a great accomplishment. I uh, wonder what the game would have been like if Nadelkoff would have been able to play. Yeah. Um, hurts for those seniors. I've been there losing in the sectional final, being one game away from the Cole Center is just, it's never fun. But you can take First, it down to the PA the announcer. So we'll stay around here and for this trophy presentation. Pablo Iglesias over there for, uh, I believe he's ABC News over there, number, number zero, uh, ABC Rex 27 Slam. News. Pablo's over there by the scores table. Presenting the medals now for Edgewood. Number one, Mark Miller. Number two, Donovan Nadelkov. Well, I three, personally, Mateo for us, Hernandez. we'll leave the camera, but me and Jackson gonna sign off here. It is. Number four, once again, final 68-65 in the sectional final, Lakeside Lutheran, head of the state. And now for the last time this year, thank you everyone for watching. Once again, I'm Luke Marks alongside Jackson Brockman and Jordan Hake. We appreciate you guys watching this OCA Media production. Have a great night and enjoy the trophy presentation, Lakeside Lutheran and Edgewood. Number 22, Jasper Alleman. Number 23, Carter Wiesicol. Number 33, Henry Apter. Number 34, Oliver Burba. Number 40, Mark Herring. And number 42, Ben Hansen. Congratulations to the Crusaders on a very successful year. for the Division Three Boys sectional final champions, Luke Sa Lakeside Lutheran Warriors. Number three, Tyler Grazens. Number four, Evan Newman. Number five, Trey Lauber. Number 11, Will Miller. Number 12, Jay Yonke. Number 13, Ethan Schutz. Number 15, Pam Magritz. Number 21, Ethan Zuberbeer. Number 23, Alex Reinke. Number 24, Levi Burkholz. Number 25, Casey Guzman. Number 32, Cooper Milsna. Number 34, Brady Wolfram. Number 42, Josh Powers. Number 44, Anders Learman. And number 45, Josh Jorgensen. And now the trophy being presented to head coach, Todd Jans. Congratulations to the Division III sectional champions, Lakeside Lutheran Warriors.